G'day guys, welcome to Scotch Down Under. I'm Ken. I'm Scott. I'm the Q-Ball. And today we're going to have a look at the Ulcer Bay Sweet Smoke. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is the uh, second release from Ulsa Bay. So their first one was the 1.1 and now we have the 1.2. The 1.1 wasn't available in Australia, was it? No, we never saw it. I didn't see it. I heard about it, but I never got a chance to try it. Disappointed. Yes, very disappointed. Yeah, there was a good degree of online hype about it. Mm. And, and then, no, you can't have it in Australia. So this one's a uh, sweet and smoke. So we're going to get some sweetness and some peaty smokeness, mm. which should be pretty damn good. And it's 48.9 ABV. Just a bit Ooh, up there. Punchy. Yeah. So this distillery is only fairly new onto the scene. They only started back in 2007. And do you know where they actually located? Well, they're a, a lowlands distiller. Yep. Mm. Way down south. And they actually had a pretty large and quick startup. They had eight stills already and they had 12 mash tons. And then 2013, they went, nah, this is not enough. And they doubled it. So now they have 16 stills and 24 mash tons. That's absolutely insane. God damn. That's, that's, that's a ridiculously large production for you, isn't it? Mm. Well, their yep. capacity is huge. It's 12 million liters. Which and is where's it? Hang on, hang on. Is that that's annually? Uh, that's their capacity. Yeah, that's their capacity. Is they they can uh, process twelve million liters at once, I believe. Wow. <laughs> Which is double the amount of Glen Morangi. And who owns them? Uh, uh, William Grantson. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So most of this stuff goes into blends. So it mm. goes into the Grants blend. Yeah. Which isn't too bad. No. It's so a good, it's a good base. Yeah, they use it as a base. That's exactly yeah. right. But this is kind of different to everything else that they do. Yeah. So back in 2016, as we said before, they bought out their first release, which we never got to see about. Mm. Didn't get a taste of it. Everyone was raving about it. But then in 2018, they yeah. bought this one out. And, and you were saying before that it's a little bit different than what they bought out. Yeah. So like, even the way they do everything is different. Um, they're more the scientific side than they are the <laughs> the more scientific side than they are the traditional side of scotch making or just whiskey making in general. On the bottles, they they specify ppm and sppm. So ppm is p Phen p per million phenols per million phenols per million. But yep. basically, that's the amount of p. Yeah, so yeah. That, that is the measured, that's Ten how they measured the yep. Um And for the first time ever, they have created their own sweetness indicator, which is indicated on the bottle as SPPM. Um, so the first release was 12 SPPM, oh no, 11, 12, uh, 11 SPPM and 21 PPM. Um, and the second release, uh, they upped the sweetness because they feel like it was imbalanced and it wasn't. Yep. Uh, are as good as they can make it, so they upped it to 19 SPPM and 22 PPM. They rate their PPM for the peat a little bit different than most distilleries. Don't yeah, they? so most distilleries that uh, rate their PPM, they do it on the malt before the distillation, um, whereas these guys do the PPM rating afterwards, so after with the final product. It will be a lot peatier than ones that advertise a higher PPM because it's taken afterwards, not before, because a lot of it is lost in the distillation. Yeah, because yeah, they might say that the barley is such a huge amount of PPM, but mm. by the time you go through the process, it could be all gone. Yeah. Do and your all. age and maturation is going to get rid of a lot yes. of it as well. So, yeah, so there's no age statement on this one, is there? No, they do aging completely different as well. So more science stuff, Q-Ball. Yay! You guys talk about that. I'm just going to drink. <laughs> well, you got have, a have a sniff. sniff. Have okay. A sniff. Cause <laughs> we'll have a sniff, but um, and then, and I, we'll I, talk a bit more. I, yeah. I don't think about the science of whiskey making that much. Oh, I, I quite, and quite enjoy it. I, I just enjoy I the tasting of it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like I like reading about people that still use a lot of traditional methods and stuff. And there is some really cool stuff going on when it comes to the science like i've 
heard of a technique where basically they say that they're producing the equivalent of a, an eight-year-old maturation in a number of months. So that's, that's which yeah. is something different again. But yeah. it's like yeah, okay. That's so, micro but, maturation, which is very similar to what these guys do. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Hey, science! On you, <laughs> um, So what, what they do with this particular whiskey is they do micro maturation. Micro maturation is cast starting, not cast finishing. They have a subsidiary company called Hudson Bay Distillery, um, which is in upstate New York. And they make a very known bourbon called the Hudson Baby Bourbon. And it's called the Baby Bourbon because they use very small casks. Um, and small bottles. Yeah, yeah they, they do small bottles, bottles as well. Well, smaller casts mean less output. L yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's a bit more high-priced, but it's very good. They're lazy too. They build their, their casts into subwoofers. Because with whiskey making, you have to turn them once a day. Instead of turning them, they play drum and bass for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> that would agitate everything ever so nicely. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. Perfect. Um, so they get these barrels. Uh, the pre uh, X bourbon small barrels and then they put the uh, Elsa Bay into it at the start for a very small amount of time and in that mm. micro maturation they can control the flavors a lot more and that's how they get the smoky sweet with different barrels and different such and such and all that so these guys are getting the barrels from the baby bourbon yeah well okay. it's, it's a subsidy <laughs> company so they ah, I believe okay. they own it yeah. Yeah, 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 I can't find much on that, but <laughs> but it's it's cool. Yeah. yeah, and I know these guys use a lot of cool new science stuff. It's very this. similar to um, Brook Laddie with their Optimore, and it's it's all science based instead of traditional marketing. Sweet um, tra traditional go science whiskey making. Yeah, science is the way forward. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I need a smell. No, no, we're going to talk about this awesome bottle first. Oh, yeah, it is a very good bottle. So this bottle is an awesome, slim, clear glass bottle. And this stopper is heavy. It's a monster. It is an absolute beast. <laughs> it's huge and That's it's heavy. And it's a big, <laughs> wide neck pour, yeah. which means that, you know, it's, it's easy to be generous. Yeah. Very, very easy. <laughs> I mean, look at the size of that cork. And they've got their Ulcer Bay written right on there. And it is a beast of and a cork. We're not entirely sure, but we know the first batch had, the, the first release had stone in the actual yeah. lid. And the I, weight of this, I yeah. believe it does have stone in it. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Like the a... weight of that, that stopper, it, it's definitely got something mm. in there. It just feels right in your hand too. Yep. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, it's a good bottle a good stopper yeah we're gonna keep this and make it a uh, infinity and it's, bottle. it's a it's yeah. a cool label too like yeah a, it's, you know you've got your okay hey for starters it's got a qr code that you can scan and, and get a ton of information mm. from uh you know signatures ppms sppm and this really cool logo hexagonal yeah. thing <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's I'm a, sure it's quite scientific. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. But then, yeah, they state the PPM and the micro maturation. Plus, they got all the signatures there. Yeah, it's very, very nicely done. The nose. Look, I've been going at this for a little while. I know. Yeah, I've, I've you, been... you were lost to the same. Look, so <laughs> the first thing straight away, like 48.9 percent. So for yeah. me, there's a bit of bit of heat on the on the nostril straight away but oh yeah definitely yeah doing the little things that i do to get past that everyone's got their own little tricks for it i stopped paying attention for a second and just got a hit of alcohol oh yeah <laughs> oh here we go going back to the science no older yeah. malt is made with this much science awesome. <clears throat> yeah so do these guys actually they don't to say i they... don't think they do but i can't guarantee that there is no coloring and it's chill, not chill filtered it doesn't specify, I believe. But I haven't read the label yet, and that's what we're good at, so... Yeah, doesn't say. Yeah. But taking a stab in the dark, you don't really need to chill filter when you're up at 48.9, so they might not. And, yeah, whether they've got colouring in or not. The the peat is there. It's not overly powerful. No. And you are getting some of that sweetness on the nose. Yeah, yeah that, to me, it's like there's peat on the outside, and then there's, like, sweet fruit in the middle. Mm. Yeah. There's something zesty, citrusy on the nose for me. Yeah, I was I was thinking it was like a fruit salad. So it's like more a, of a 
Yeah, I'm getting more of a fruit sweetness than I am like a honey sweetness. Yeah, it's fruit. I'm thinking of tropical light fruits. Like a pineapple and... So, so I, something pineapple-y, melony. Yeah. So I zoned out and had a sip. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't wait. <laughs> no, I got distracted if, if, by our notes. If that's what's going on, then yeah, I'm not going to yeah, cheers him. No, I'm no, going to cheers you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Yowza. Yeah. Not offensive, but there's a lot of peat there. Well, there is a lot of peat yeah. there, but it's smooth. Rounded off with that. I can understand sweet. why they've bumped the sweetness index up in it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, if they if the if they had left it where it was, I'm thinking maybe it, it would have been just a a peat monster. Mm -hmm. Too overpowering. Because I don't think yeah. there's any available, but. I'm going to see if I can get my hands on an old one. One imported. Oh. See if I can get it, because I really want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. That would be really interesting. Because this is the sort of whiskey that I really like. The, Same. The, just mainly the backstory for it. It's the science. <laughs> <laughs> the science. Um, but yeah, this is this is definitely one of mine and Ken's favourite whiskeys. Yeah. yeah we, uh, it's, I think below. Oh, yep, yeah. There's a bottle there yeah. and an empty one over there. Yeah. <laughs> so are you getting into the fruit on the pellet? I haven't actually read the label. A little bit. You know, that's the... The peat is still there and it is quite smoky. Um, but the sweet side of things is beautifully subtle. Yeah. It's, it's why I'm thinking... I'm, I'm trying to sort of nail down some of the particular flavours, but because of the, the peat volume at the same time... It's over the over the top. Well, when we it's, add it's some water, not, yeah. it's not quite overpowering it. No, it, but it's, it's over just, the top of everything. It's dropping it into the background, mm. which is, yeah. you know, a, a neat little bloody trick in itself. So if we're going back to our melon fruit salad, it's like we're sitting there having our melon fruit salad over a, a roaring it's... fire underneath. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's it's, 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 more like, it's more like the, you know, like for argument's sake, you make a fruit salad and it sits there for maybe a day in the fridge. Yeah. And you get that wonderful amalgamation of juice in the bottom. Yeah. Where you can't really distinguish, nail down what's there, but it's this wonderful combination of fruit flavours. Yeah. And that's, that's what I think I'm getting. Mm, it is just, it's something else. There's nothing else but on the like market on the, available. On the, on the front of the palette, like especially up on, on right the inside front. of the gum up there, mm. I'm getting that real zest and sharp, like the sharpness of a Granny Smith apple. And But there's still that zestiness of, of something citrusy, but more more rind than actual fruit. Yeah, I was thinking of when you get the rind and you squeeze it and you get that mm. coming out. The citric acid, yeah. Yeah, yep. It's like a little shot of that. Mmm, it's good. Let's add some nice. water, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a little bit of dilution. It's right over there. Oh, that's right. I'll put it over here. <laughs> for safekeeping. <laughs> and then for, <laughs> forgot where I put it. <laughs> I, I'm actually, because we've got a very... We, we good. Very generous tram. <laughs> well, I've got drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably about one and a half times what I would normally put in there yeah same I'm going to put a and I'm, and I'm thinking I might need a little more but we'll see how that goes I feel like four drops ain't going to cut it no I'm doing four four uh, whatever you call those that's a lot of water that's a lot of whiskey and it is 48.9 so we have got some room to play yeah there's a decent amount of playroom there with dilution and I want to open it up and get some more of our fruit salad I'm going to get these two. I should lift it off the table for that. I don't think I've put enough in because I don't think it's really changed much. I feel like it has. I'm getting like an earthy kind of like deserty kind of... Jesus, Cuba. <laughs> well, you did pour very, <laughs> very generously, mate. <sighs> So we kind of need to really ramp the water up because, yeah, I mean, let's face it, it was probably a, a decent mm. double shot and then some. Oh, 
that's really taken the alcohol off the nose now. Mm. I'm getting toast. Toast. Yep. Alright, I want some more. There's, Light toast. There's, there's still that citrus zest, but I'm getting. I don't know, I'm thinking. Maybe a bit of peach. Mm. And I'm and I'm still getting like this sort of melony. Yeah, a melon fruit salad. Yeah. I haven't got melon yet. Yeah, that's because you drank yours early. You ate it. You didn't even taste it. I zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really softened up on the mm. palate. It's starting to balance out a lot more. But, um... Oh, yeah. God damn. I, th I, th I think... I, I am actually loving the fact that I can't nail down that sweetness. Yeah, that's the point. As to what it is. And the smoke is just lingering so nicely. Yeah, it's not up front at all. It hangs on at the end. That is a lot rounder and sweeter. Like, it's... The, right at the end of the sweetness was kind of like a fairy floss, kind of like candied apple kind of sweetness to it. Toffee. Yeah, toffee. Hmm, a light toffee though, not not a. But I reckon heavy the, one. the candied apple is closer because you've got the apple as well. You've got the that crispness and sharpness on, and, the, yeah, yeah, and, on the front. Yeah, as well as the sweetness and the toffee. It's almost like a fresh sugar cane almost too. Yeah. Mm. So in a nutshell, it's good. Mm. Mm. It's good. Mm, mm, it's mm, science, mm, and it's mm, hard mm, to put mm, down mm. what it is. It is a good one to actually let sit in the mouth too, mm. and and really let the palate the sweetness soak up, really develop, soak up that peat, and let the the sweetness really comes through when you let it sit in the mouth a bit longer. Mm. Yeah, this has really become a lot more. It's actually got yellow now, isn't it? You know what? That cloudiness that's coming into it. Yep, non chill. That filtered. says to me it's non chill filter. I was yeah. going to say. Since you don't have one on your bar, how much would you pay for the one you're going to buy? Because we definitely both know what, what you're talking is. about buying. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I, I, I genuinely do not know what this is worth. I, I mean, I've seen it on shelves, but it's just the, it's one of those ones that the price has never really sort of stuck in my head. But um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it's in a ballpark of about 150, 160. Mm -hmm. Way off. Yeah, I'll sell him my bottle of that. Yeah. So I got this at a, at a special in my shop. Um, off special, it's ninety nine. And I Wowzers. got I got that for eighty nine. I don't know why and I was got, thinking you it got was yours more. for eighty nine as well from my shop, eh? Yeah, I think yeah, it was nine yeah. eighty nine. Yeah. I was thinking ninety nine because like, that's what, what the normal it, price for is. For what it is, and like how it drinks, because there's not that long time. Uh, just sitting in a warehouse that's taking up room and They don't need money. to recoup as much cost. Yeah, they don't yeah. have to. So that's where that's where science comes into it as well. Is it brings yeah, I don't know. Down. I, I genuinely don't know why I was thinking it was it was that much. Because it, like it, it drinks maybe. It does. It drinks yeah. nice. It does. Yeah. It, it drinks like a like a hundred and fifty dollar whiskey. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like we're not going to give you shit for being that far off. And like, hey, to be honest, yeah. I'm I'm chuffed with that. Yeah. 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 So to, to discover that basically it's a sub one hundred dollar whiskey and yeah. it's. Fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to give it a good score out of ten, then, by the sounds of it. The value for money always bumps the score up for me. Yeah. Yep. Um, I personally, I would like a little more of the sweetness. The sweetness, yeah. Once, like the, once the, the dilution, the peat level mm. is great because it's not super punchy in your face, but it's there. Mm. But yeah, I, I'd like a little more balance between the sweet and the peat. Yeah. Especially when it has a name like Sweet Smoke. I mean, the sweetness is there, but it's it's still overpowered slightly by the smoke. Because that dilution really brought out the sweetness. And it does. It made it, it really does. rounded it, it off the drink, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so, but looking at that first drink sort of thing, not how it develops over time. Mm. Um, but having said that, look, to be honest, I, I'm... And again, the money, the value for money factor is punching it up a bit. Um, it's a solid 9.2. Yeah. 
I'm going to give it a little bit higher than that. Just because I really like the whiskey and the story behind it. Anything science based, I'm probably going to get on higher. But I reckon a 9.5. Oh, hell, look, I'll, I'll give the stopper an extra point one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a very good call. And that is going to make an amazing infinity bottle for us. Yeah, I'm um, going to go 9.5 as well. Yeah. I love the science. Science rules. And I love the their labelling, their story. They've only been around for a little while. That stopper is an absolute beast. You could throw that and knock down a building with that thing. It's <laughs> massive. What did you give it? You gave it a 9.5, I gave 9. it a 9.5, and you gave it a I 9. gave it a 9.2 and a 0.1 for the stopper. 0.1 for the stopper. So, all around, that is a very good rating and a very good dram. So, on that note, until next time, have, have a good, good one. one. Mmm. Fucking tasty. It is good shit.